Building a brand these days is hard. The problem, Marty Neumeyer tells us, is clutter. There's product clutter, too many products and services. There's feature clutter, too many features in each product. There's advertising clutter, too many media messages. There's message clutter, too many elements per message. And finally, there's channel clutter, too many competing channels. In this summary, we're going to walk you through 17 steps you can take to create the brand you've always dreamed of. But first, we need to get a couple of things out of the way. First, we need a definition of a brand. Marty tells us that a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or company. It's not what you say it is, it's what other people say it is. Second, building a brand these days is not about pushing products and services. It's about pulling people into a tribe they can trust. Your goal is to help people answer this question. If I buy this product, what will that make me? Finally, your brand should be in search of white space in the market. The goal isn't to be better than the competition. It's to play where there is no competition. When focus is paired with differentiation, supported by a trend, and surrounded by compelling communications, you have the basic ingredients of Zag. Let's get started. Step number one, who are you? Which is a focus element. Finding the white space with a brand does no good if you don't have the experience, credibility, and passion needed to fuel that success day after day, year after year. Here's some questions to ask yourself. Where do you have the most credibility? Where do you have the most experience? And where does your passion lie? And here are some action steps to take. Write a future obituary for your brand. Step number two, what do you do? Which is also a focus element. The next step is to define why you exist beyond making money. For example, Google's purpose is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. If it takes more than 12 words, go back to step number one or set it aside for now and return to it later. Here are some questions to ask yourself. What business are you in? And here are some action steps to take. Decide what your purpose is beyond selling a product or service. And state your purpose in 12 words or less. Step number three. What's your vision? Another focus element. Do you know and understand what your brand vision is? You need to be prepared to paint a clear picture of the future of your business. The ultimate vision was John F. Kennedy proclaiming that there would be a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. Here are some questions to ask yourself. What do you want to accomplish in 5, 10, or 20 years? How can you make this vision palpable and exciting? And here are some action steps to take. Paint a vivid picture of your future. Test it on a real piece of communication. Go back and refine it further and use it repeatedly to illustrate the direction of your business. Step number four, what wave are you riding? Which is a trend element. Do you know what current or future wave your business is riding? Well, you could build a business without harnessing a trend. It's just a lot harder to do. As Neumeyer tells us, it's the difference between paddling a surfboard and riding a wave. Here's some questions to ask yourself. What trend is powering your business? How powerful is it? Can you ride more than one trend at a time? And here are some action steps to take. Make a list of the trends that will power your business. Step number five. Who shares the brandscape, which is a differentiation element? Numera reminds us that zagging requires us to define our company based on what makes us unique, not on what makes us admirable. That's why understanding who you're competing with in your category is important. The positions worth owning in any category are number one or number two. If you're number three, a case could be made that you can look to unseat number two. But anything lower than number three, and you should look to invent a new category where you can be number one in. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Who else competes in your category? Who comes first, second, or third 
in customers' minds. And here are some action steps to take. Find out how your brand ranks with customers. Design a strategy to become number one or number two, or to become the first mover in a new category. Step number six, what makes you the only, which is a differentiation element. Our brand is the only blank that blank. In the first blank, put the name of your category, and in the second blank, put your zag. Here's a more detailed version of the exercise using Harley Davidson as an example to help you pinpoint your onlyness. What? The only motorcycle manufacturer. How? That makes big, loud motorcycles. Who? For macho guys and macho wannabes. Where? Mostly in the United States. Why? Who want to join a gang of cowboys. And when? In an era of decreasing personal freedom. Here's some questions to ask yourself. What's the one thing that makes your brand both different and compelling? And here are some action steps to take. Complete a simple onlyness statement. Add detail by answering what, how, who, where, and why. Step number seven. What should you add or subtract, which is a differentiation element? Less is really more. The art of building a brand that zags is knowing when to add and when to subtract. Here's a rule of thumb you can use. If adding an element to your brand brings you into competition with a stronger competitor, go back to the drawing board. Here are some questions to ask yourself. What existing brand elements are undermining your onlyness? What new brand elements could strengthen your onlyness? How do the remaining elements align with your vision? And here are some action steps to take. Make a list of all current and planned offerings and brand elements. Decide which offerings to keep, sacrifice, or add. And be brutal. It's better to err on the side of sacrifice. Step number eight. Who loves you? Which is a focus element. The goal with this step is to find your brand loyalists. According to Numair, every brand is built by a community, including its partners, suppliers, customers, non-customers, and sometimes even competitors. A brand is essentially an ecosystem in which each participant contributes and each participant benefits. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Who makes up your brand community? How can you manage the gives and gets so everyone is happy? And here are some action steps to take. Diagram your brand's ecosystem. Decide how each participant will both contribute and benefit. Step number nine, who's the enemy, which is a communication element. In brand building, apathy is the kiss of death. So instead of waiting for the fight to come to you, you should head on out and pick a fight. Step up and take on the biggest, most successful competitor you can find. The goal is not to topple the big guys, but to employ the principle of contrast to throw your zag into sharp relief. And remember, sometimes the enemy is not a company, but the old way of doing things. Here's some questions to ask yourself. Which competitor can you paint as the bad guy? And here are some action steps to take. Tell your customers what you're not in no uncertain terms. Step number 10, what do they call you? Which is a differentiation element. This step is all about picking the right name. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Is your name helping or hurting your brand? If it's hurting, is there an opportunity to change it? If it's too late to change it, is there a way to work around it? And is it suitable for brand play? Does it have creative legs? Here are some action steps to take. Choose a name that's different, brief, and appropriate. Make sure it's easy to spell and pronounce. Find out if the name can be used as a URL. And finally, determine how easy or difficult it will be to legally defend. Step number 11. How do you explain yourself, which is a communication element? A true line is the one thing you can say about your brand based on your onlyness statement. It must be something that your competitors can't or won't claim, and something that your customers find both valuable and credible. Here's a true line that people might use to describe Southwest Airlines. 
you can fly just about anywhere for less than it costs to drive. Once you have a true line, it's a short step to a customer facing tagline. For instance, when Southwest says, you're now free to move about the country, they are translating their true line into a more polished form. Here's some questions to ask yourself. What's the one true statement you can make about your brand? And here are some action steps to take. Craft a true line that tells why your brand is compelling. Avoid any commas or ands and turn your true line into a tagline to use with customers. Step number 12, how do you spread the word, which is a communication element? A marketing plan based on zagging will appear much larger than it is. That's because you will choose to compete only in the touch points where you can win and win big. Questions to ask yourself. How can you unpack your name, true line, and tagline? How can you enroll brand advocates through messaging? And how can you align all your communications with your Zag? Here are some action steps to take. Make sure your messaging is as different as your brand and only compete at the touch points where you can win. Step number 13, how do people engage with you? Which is a communication element. When mapping your value proposition and how people will experience you, remember that best practices are usually common practices. Make sure to define your touch points based on first principles. Questions to ask yourself. What are you selling and how are you selling it? Which touch point will let you compete in white space? And here are some action steps to take. Map your value proposition against those of your competitors. See which competitive areas you can avoid entirely and discover customer touch points where you'll be unopposed. Step number 14, what do they experience, which is a communication element. Customers experience your brand at specific touch points. So choosing what those touch points are and influencing what happens there is important work. Here are some questions to ask yourself. How will customers learn about you? How can you enroll them in your brand? Who will be your competition at each touch point? Where should you put in your marketing resources. And here are some action steps to take. Map the customer journey from non-awareness to full enrollment. Bet your resources on the experience that zag. Step number 15, how do you earn their loyalty, which is a communication element. When customers are loyal, one, they stop considering other brands. Two, they request your brand by name. Three, they recommend your brand to others. Four, they wait longer and travel farther to get your brand. Number five, they accept brand extensions more readily. And finally, six, they continue to pay a premium price. Here are some questions to ask yourself. How can you help customers build barriers to competition? How can you avoid creating a disloyalty program? Here are some action steps to take. Start by being loyal to customers. Don't make new customers feel punished or excluded. And finally, give loyal customers the tools to introduce new customers. Step number 16, how do you extend your success? Which is a focus element. As soon as a company goes from a single offering to a line of offerings, it's in the brand portfolio business. There are two models for organizing brand portfolios. The first is a house of brands, which means that the company markets a range of separate brand names. P&G is the most well-known example of this with brands like Tide, Crest, and Old Spice. The second model is a branded house, meaning that the company is the brand and the products and services are subsets of the main brand. Here's some questions to ask yourself. How do you keep growing the brand year after year? And here are some action steps to take. Choose between a house of brands and a branded house. Add extensions that reinforce the brand's meaning. Avoid extensions that unfocus the brand's meaning. And avoid extensions that bring you into competition with leaders. And finally, here we are at step number 17. How do you protect your portfolio? Which is the final focus element. There are four dangers that brand portfolios face that single brands don't. 
Contagion, confusion, contradiction, and complexity. Contagion is the dark side of synergy. If one product line in a branded house has a problem, it can infect the rest of the product lines. Confusion is another problem. When there are 17 varieties of Crest toothpaste, we don't really know what Crest is all about anymore. Contradiction is a third problem that occurs when a company tries to extend a brand globally. Since brands are defined by customers and not companies, people in one culture might view a product or company differently. For instance, Disney might mean wholesome entertainment in some cultures and cultural imperialism in another. Lastly, we have complexity. Multiple segments, multiple products, and multiple extensions can easily create an overgrown and hard-to-manage brand portfolio. Managing your brand portfolio requires clear roles, relationships, and boundaries for brands. The most important task in brand building, once you've built one, is the ability to say no. Here's some questions to ask yourself. How can the whole be worth more than the parts? How can you stay focused under short-term profit pressure? And finally, here are some action steps to take. Avoid seasickness, contagion, confusion, contradiction, and complexity. Understand the long-term effects of brand extensions. So there you have it. Everything you need in order to start zagging your brand. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!